Hey, everybody. This is a Neumann U87 AI clone, a stripped-down one. And this is the circuit board that you can use to build it. We're going to put one together in just a minute here. But let's talk about it first. Um, this was based on the original Neumann U87 AI circuit that got stripped down uh, by some users on the DIY forum. And they removed anything unnecessary for using this as a standard cardioid microphone. So they took off the attenuation pad, they took off the high pass filter, they took off the polarization pattern uh, selection switch, um, and got it down to its basics uh, as a cardioid microphone, which is really cool. And it means you can build this mic using this board uh, all told for less than $150 easily. Um, but I got to thinking to myself, what if we don't want just the stripped down version of it? Like, what if we want some of the features on it? Well, that's why I put this together. This is a daughter board, uh, and it gives you back your attenuation pad switch. Uh, it gives you a brightness select switch, and we're working on adding in a uh, high pass filter again for this. Now, this board should work not only with the board that I made, but it should work with any stripped down U87 board that you find. Um, moving around on the internet these days. Um, and here's actually something really fun that I... <laughs> here's actually something really fun that I put together. This one allows you to build this into a TLM-103 style body. So we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, but uh, you can actually build this mic. Actually, you can technically build buy this one. I'm going to sell this one when I get done putting it through its paces. Anywho, uh, let's go build a microphone. Okay, here we go. We're going to skip the boring part of me putting this together by shoving components through holes and soldering them into place, but you'll notice that I do not have anything fancy here, just a plain old garden variety soldering iron and a bunch of little wire pigtails that make it easier to connect a few things, notably the daughter board to the main board. Uh, a couple of things to look out for while doing this. Uh, you'll notice in a minute that I am going to be putting this in a three-quarter sized mic body. If you are building this thing into a small body, you are going to want to take some precautions. You'll notice that I have that one capacitor that's up near the top, the silver one, and uh, it's going to stick up high. So I am going to coat the tip of that with some hot melt glue just to make sure it doesn't come into contact with anything. Uh, so we're putting the board together here, and you can feel free to put some of those larger capacitors on the back, as you see me doing. Also, the one in the middle takes up a lot of room, but there's three spots. You don't have to use a big styrene capacitor like that. Um... You're going to want to be careful about soldering things and make sure that they don't interfere with each other. That big styrene capacitor does have a leg that kind of passes really near a resistor, so be sure that you don't uh, get the legs to touch on that. Make sure everything's isolated. Uh, we're putting together the XLR plug right here, so I'm putting some little pigtails on it, and we're sticking it in the body. One last important thing. You see this little loop right here on the XLR plug? That is actually the body ground, and I have taken a little piece of wire and attached it to XLR pin 1. Uh, you need to use that to ground the body of the microphone, because if you don't, there will be a very loud hum, and you won't like it. Now, as you'll notice, I tend to pot things in hot melt glue a lot, um, like the top of this uh, capacitor so it's not touching the body of the mic and our flying stuff here. You could use a turret for this. I've just elected to do hot glue. Um, but yeah, on the flip side of the mic I've potted where I've soldered everything in hot glue. Again, you could use uh, shrink tubing like uh, this, but I was using the hot glue for other things anyway and I had it handy. It's not a bad, uh, not a bad way of doing things. So this is our finished mic and it is ready to roll. So let's put it together and have a sample of it. So I'm going to revamp this a little bit, but my uh, stand here is a little bit too uh, wide for this small body. Don't be afraid if the base is a little bit wide to fit up into the head basket to just touch it with a soldering iron. Again, if you do use hot melt glue to insulate these, be very careful you do not drip any on the capsule. Also, you can kind of see where I touched the base of that with a soldering iron just to kind of 
flatten it down a bit so it fits a little better inside the head basket. One thing to remember when soldering your capsule is to be careful how you position it when you are soldering it. Like if you have to sit it down, make sure that your capsule is not touching anything and is elevated. And do not position the wire over top of your capsule because the last thing you want to do is drip molten solder directly onto your capsule. Do not touch your capsule with your bare fingers. Uh, do not touch it with anything, in fact. Make sure that it stays clean and largely dust free. Um, once you have uh, soldered up these little points right here, then be sure to like cover them with something insulative like uh, I am going to pot them in hot melt glue, but you could put like shrink, uh, let's see, I've got some here. Shrink tubing, you could use that, but just be sure that you electrically isolate them. And so we have our microphone plugged into our uh, interface here, and we've got the phantom power turned on, being careful not to touch anything. Um, and, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bias the FET. So, uh, we should have left a leg off of our, uh, source on our, uh, FET here, but I didn't. So I'm going to use a probe to do this instead. Now, I'm just playing a one kilohertz tone coming out of my computer. And, uh, I've got one end of this alligator clip on the end of my jack here, the tip where the tone is being generated, and the other end of this is going to one of my probes. So all I have to do is take this probe, and I carefully, carefully insert it onto the source leg of the FET right here, so that the tone is generated. And then because the mic is plugged into the uh, interface, we are recording from the mic. I'm recording in Audacity, and you see it has, like if I zoom in, it's like really, really wavy, and that's actually, if you count the seconds, that's the uh, 60 hertz electricity in the background. That's the hum that it's picking up from mains power. We, however, are interested in these small peaks right here. So if we zoom in, we want to make sure that the uh, small peaks are even on both sides, uh, none of them are flattened off at the top or the bottom, and they seem to be fairly consistent in capturing our one kilohertz tone. This looks to be about correct, but if it's off, you'll notice that in your recordings, the waveform is offset from center. See how this one dips down? Now, in this next one, we've adjusted a little bit, and it's not as bad as it was before, but you can see it's still there. On the third one, it looks almost right, but if we turn that little adjustment screw a little bit more, you can see in the fourth one where it's finally good again. In a small body build, there is one little problem, child, here. This capacitor up here is not well marked. The crimped side is the positive side of it, uh, and the negative leg is going to bend down over the top of it, and again, in a small body, that's going to take up a lot of room, and it might brush the side, so I like to cover it with something to keep it insulated and from brushing anything metal that it shouldn't. Let's talk about the boards real quick. They're clearly labeled, and you can pretty much figure out where every part goes at any given time. Uh, there's a QR code for a bill of materials, and if you look at the center where the big uh, capacitor goes, there's actually three different positions where you can put it in, depending on the size of capacitor you select for that one. Um, the daughter board has two add-on options, one for a pad switch and one for a brightness selector switch. Uh, both of these are optional, but if you do install the daughter board for the pad switch, you will have to route the XLR output from the main board into the daughter board and then the daughter board's output into the XLR plug at the bottom of the mic. If you're doing this with a smaller body mic, it can be a squeeze, but you can get it done. Now, on the other side, there is a schematic of where everything should go. So really, you ought to be able to just pick up this board and build it based on what's written on the front of it. And it's pretty easy to do. A couple of nice features you'll see is for the large capacitor in the front, there are three positions for the legs. So you can get a smaller capacitor here if you want and install it. Or you can use the big like polystyrene one that like I've used on this build. Um, 
it's pretty straightforward and the daughter board is actually pretty nice as well. This currently is actually an amalgamation of two circuits. One, it's got this H-pad that I've been using in a lot of different things and I just adapted for use in this microphone as an add-on pad and this little brightness switch add-on uh, that little one that I just dropped will be good if you do the TLM 103 form factor but for now it's built onto this board right here and in fact it's nice because it comes off of the main board there's the spot for it right there and uh, it actually wires up to the front of the board here and you have your choice of capacitors. You can switch to the 220 or whatever value you choose for the normal and you can switch to a lower value for a brighter sound. The H-pad is nice because it's selectable. Now in this one we've only built in one because we only really want a 10 dB switch on it but if you wanted a selectable switch with several different options you could definitely build that into the mic. In future releases of this board there's going to be a header right here so instead of a switch you can actually move the header on smaller form factor microphones, which will be nice, but for now, um, the current boards don't have that, and you can actually remedy it by just jumping the cables like this, like I've done. So this one is permanently set to this one, but if I ever feel like it, I can nip that off and solder it to this one, and it'll go through this one. Uh, switch would be nice. This one's not going to have that when I finish building it. Back to the front, a um, couple of things you should be aware of with this build. One, the large capacitor here. Everything is positioned on this board, so it's convenient. Now, I would put the resistors in before I put in the large capacitor. Secondly, the large capacitor like this has a leg that kind of travels down and over the top of that resistor, if you can see it. The resistor should be positioned so that the... Um, capacitor's leg does not touch it. Uh, if you're really worried about it, you can pot it in some hot melt glue while you're doing it, but like it should be positioned correctly so that the leads don't make contact. So watch out for that when you're assembling this microphone. Another thing to watch out for on this bill of materials is this capacitor right here. Uh, it is not well labeled which side is positive and negative, but if you are familiar with capacitors, you will know that the crimped side down at the bottom is the positive. Also, because of the way it stands and the fact that it is an axial capacitor, uh, we've bent the top lead down like this. If you're paranoid about it or putting it in a small body like I am, top that off with a little hot melt glue so that it doesn't make contact with anything important. While we're on this side of the microphone, we have this one gig ohm resistor and it is not connected to the board. I've actually left it flying and connected it to the leg for the uh, front diaphragm. And I've also done the same here with the center leg of the FET. The reason for this is because if you elevate those off the board, and you can use a turret to do it, although I'm probably going to, again, use hot melt glue on this build, but you can use a turret to do it, that will elevate it off the board and keep capacitance from causing a hum. It will keep it very quiet for you. Um, that's about it for the top of the board. Uh, yeah, this capacitor right here is a large one. And if you don't have room for it on the board, like you could scoot this this way a little bit. I didn't on this build. And so unfortunately there wasn't room for it. You can absolutely put it on the back of the board. That does not hurt anything whatsoever. So this particular um, transformer is a 10 to three. It's backwards from what we need, so we wired it up backwards. The primary is the black and red leads, and the yellow and white are the secondary. Uh, also, you'll notice the XLR cables off the bottom of the primary board. If you're not building on the daughter board, those go directly to the XLR plug cables in the microphone. But since we are building on the daughter board and using the H-pad, those run over here to the daughter board, which goes through the H-pad, and these will connect to the, uh, these will connect to the mic bodies cables. Uh, other than that, not much to tell. It's a really straightforward build. If you look at the, oh, that's the wrong one. Um, if you look at the board, you can see it labels clearly where everything goes. The 
Zener diode has a little black mark on one end. That is labeled clearly on what side it needs to go here. And again, fairly straightforward build. Also, all of these boards are for sale at www.hulahulamukau.com. Uh, just go into the custom engineering link and check out uh, the U87 AI boards. Uh, it'll also have a link for the daughter boards. And uh, these I'm not finished testing yet, so they'll be listed as coming soon. But these should be around shortly. So if you want to build this into a TLM 103 style body, we've got you covered. Uh, for now, they'll go into a normal sized body. And this one is actually built into a three quarter sized body, which we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, you're hearing it now. YouTube compression aside. Uh, so yeah, these things are actually pretty solid and you can build your own for, again, under $150 all told. So happy building everybody and thanks.